Team Nemo, and our app is called GetUp. Um, we, we started out thinking that the best innovations are the ones that build ecosystems. Things like Facebook, things like the App Store, the Game Center, um, the Google Play Store, they all, they all focus around not essentially building um, a, a singular client base, but building an ecosystem that everybody else can build off of. And that's what we wanted to do. So our app is not essentially an app itself, but it's an, a framework on which other people can build off of. So essentially, it's a very simple idea where um, you have a mobile pedometer. Um, and in this case, we used an Android phone, but you could use any phone um, in later deployments. And you, you would be able to uh, get pedometer readings that build, up, that build onto a server, which you can then access um, on your account from a dashboard. Now, this dashboard is kind of like the game center where you're able to access um, all of your stats and things like that. But the main point of the actual pedometer readings are a currency that which you are able to use across different apps and games, which third-party people can build off of with an API that we developed. Um, so Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. So one of the things is that we actually um, create a Facebook app um, just to linkage or leverage the Facebook uh, user login. So we don't, don't you have. Can just touch it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Touch it. Oh. <laughs> I forgot. Touch screens as well. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's loading. I need to log in. What film that? It takes time. You need to log in on Facebook. <laughs> log in to Facebook. For what? Two. Oh, the email you enter does not belong to any account. <laughs> Come on. I, I, this is Facebook. Small demos. And test center, it will be direct to our um, dashboard, which, which we will have many different widgets or uh, types. And now I will have give it to our CSS master <laughs> to talk about. Okay. Right. <laughs> right here. Um, so I, I worked on the layout of it. Um, and uh, pretty much we have it so that there's different tiles. Actually, I guess I can use my fingers. Um, and we have it so that the, um, the, the header is set to something, and then we were going to add on some more. But So we have different tiles here, and um, each of them display certain things. Um, what we liked about these tiles is that you can expand them. So you click max, and you expand that out. Oh. And then you can also <laughs> expand multiple tiles. Oh, one of the cool features about this currency is that I'll, I'll load it again. If it'll load again. You can see that it... Um, yeah, you, there's populates a yeah, populates, there's animation. But, yeah, animation populates from there. Um, so yeah, and then I'm not sure if this is gonna if work. You should use okay. the mouse instead. So for this this graph in particular, you can uh, select a range and then it'll blow up. You, yeah, you can actually <laughs> zoom in on the graph and look at more precise readings because these, because some of these graphs are graphs that are populated with a lot of data rather than just um, by week or by um, by day because uh, those are graphs that are active throughout the enti entirety of your account's existence. So you want to be able to zoom in on certain periods, but you still want to have access to all of the data, which is why the zooming functionality is so important. And, and getting that beautiful zooming and resizing and animation was non-trivial. That was, it was Yeah, it was non-trivial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then on the side that you can actually, it's a, mo a mock-up, but um, <laughs> like for example, if our game was actually implemented on things like Mass Effect, Spore, uh, modern combat, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> if our framework was on top of those things and you logged into your profile, like for example, this baby is apparently playing Mass Effect. <laughs> and, um, the games which, which you have logged in through, through your profile on this framework would be available here and you can, and you can go to them and you can see which games you can use. And um, one of the things that we decided based on our currency was that um, the wallet that, in which you store all of your currency is common across all of your apps. So um, you have the same wallet for everything. So it's not like if you spend money on one thing, you're going to have the same amount left when you go to the other, to the other app. You, the money that you spend on one app is going to be spent. Mm -hmm. So you sh that's something that you have to look out for. And it's actually something that will bring people back to the dashboard to look on it more often because they want to know how much money they have. Um, do you guys want to? Yeah. Oh, and then, so I guess we worked on the, the back end API database. Yep. Uh, Hopefully this works like it should. So essentially, uh, the data that they get on the dashboard uh, is fed using the pedometer on the, the mobile application, and it runs as a service. So the app doesn't need to be open. You could be doing whatever you want. But if I put it in my pocket. It's actually an Android phone, even though it looks like a Windows phone. Yeah, yeah. This guy has problems. And uh, you can see it's, it's updating if I, if I was moving the phone around. And as I walk around, it's kind of updating. 
the screen will update instantly. So this was actually sort of a proof of concept of the open WebSocket that we created. Uh, we used a CouchDB backend and Node.js with Socket.io. And it's, it's just straight WebSocket. Um, every time the DB sends a change flag, it instantly updates over here. And you can see right here, this is actually the Node.js server. Um, and with Socket.io, just sort of updating and pushing it over uh, Socket.io to the web page. Yeah, I'm not certain how much of that actual updating is going to come on, the, on these videos, but that's but really... But it's there, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, I'll attest to it. <laughs> I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it's pretty cool. And yeah, it was... Um, it's real-time. Yeah, yeah real-time. Asynchronous. Time. And, <laughs> and it's all, all that is available. Yeah, and it's all RESTful is the main yes. thing. Uh, so, which makes it easy for other third-party yeah. developers to... Because we just give them an, our API, and then mm -hmm. like, they make a call, and they put it in the database, they pull from the database, they, they can do what they need to do. And um, it saves battery, because you're not keeping an open socket when you're on a mobile device. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and this also, this kind of real-time data can feed into the J charts that we were using, yep. and then you can just see your charts go as you're walking if you want, mm -hmm. for some reason. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that is, that's our... Happy yeah, I mean, wow. <laughs> that is amazing. So what was the most fun? Uh, we, I mean, we each worked on different portions, so I mean... I guess for me the most fun was uh, working with Node.js because I had never done it before. Working with two new technologies, Node.js and CouchDB, that I'd never ever used before was just extremely fun because I learned it in the span of a night, and yeah. so it was pretty cool. Yeah. And him as well. Same here. Um, I actually, I've been working with NoSQL for a long time, but Couch is one I hadn't tried before. And then finding that Couch has the RESTful API with change flags that can be utilized and has a huge community that, and the socket IO stuff, we just found it, we just implemented it, and getting it to work was a little bit of a hassle, but it was really fun. Yeah, for me, um, actually, I work for front end and back end, uh, back and forth. But I find the most funny thing is to dealing with the Facebook API. That um, actually, I spend most of the time to deal with how to make sure that thing is securely connected. But it turns out that I, uh, there's uh, some simple method that I can call that. For that. <laughs> Good, well, I guess the most fun was for me was that like everything that I did was was new to me. Like JavaScript itself, which is what I've been, what I mainly worked in, I learned last night in like five hours mm -hmm. before I got here. And so like everything was new, I, like JSON was new, jQuery was new, uh, even using Git, I knew what Git was, but I never actually used it for a legitimate project, so even that experience was very, very uh, fruitful for me. So just everything was good. <laughs> yeah, same I, I've, there's a lot of things that they use that I didn't, I've never used Git before. Um, I worked more on the front end and designing the layout page, right. and uh, I like that, and I get to harass these two about giving me the code <laughs> to put on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so cool. That's us. Yeah. So what about future directions? What do you want right. to do? Where do you want to go? Um, I mean, I talked to you. I didn't get a chance to talk to them. I was thinking in the event that we could continue, we could continue, but otherwise release as open source, possibly. Um, if, uh, it's all on GitHub already. And yeah, I mean, sourced. I'd love to see you guys and all you guys, you know, finish what you, you know, get mm -hmm. you realize the vision. So yeah. like I said, we can, maybe over lunch we can talk about what kind of ways that would support yeah, you to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, like open source, and then like we said, we're building this for third party. You know, the idea was a framework. So the future exists, like there is potential. It's built into the design of the application. I guess in, in so. the future it would be a very simple getup.js. Yeah. <laughs> where you just include that and you can essentially, uh, yeah. I guess, incorporate the currency in your own app. Yeah. That's it. Really cool. Any questions from anybody else? Well, thank you, and a round of applause.